Hi. Hi, everyone. Good evening. I'm Dr. Kyle Swanson here with Dr. Lexi Martinez tonight uh, for our KSB Wellness presentation. We'd like to thank Aaron Fox and KSB Wellness for putting this event on tonight. And we would like to present some information on supportive shoe uh, advice. You know, it is the holiday season. Maybe you're looking to purchase a pair of shoes as a gift or just want some information on, on a good supportive shoe. So uh, without further ado, uh, tonight we'd like to discuss the importance of supportive shoes, uh, what to look for in a three-point uh, shoe test, um, arch support and how they can be helpful as well. Uh, we'll go into high heels a little bit and also talk about five-toed shoes. And then we will discuss the recommended shoe brands that uh, we as podiatrists recommend. Uh, so without further ado, I'll turn it over to Dr. Martinez. Thanks, Dr. Swanson. So some of the reasons why this is important to discuss good supportive shoe wear is um, it helps you feel your best and prevents you from uh, getting injuries. And also proper shoe wear affects your whole body, not just your feet. You know, you can start having pain in your knees, your hips, your back, and even your neck. And so some of the things that we're going to talk about uh, within a supportive shoe criteria is a stiff supportive heel, minimal amount of torque, it bends where the toes bend, proper arch support, it's wide enough at the forefoot, it's long enough where the toes end, and it feels comfortable right away. So first within the three-point uh, foot examination that we want to do for the shoes is that when we examine the heel, it bends only slightly. So what we, we will have you do is you're going to grab the heel of the shoe in one hand and then the top of the heel of the shoe in the other hand. And you want to only see only mild bending whenever you move the heel back and forth. It should not be super flexible. The second point that we want to look at is minimal amount of torque. So you should not be able to wring out your shoe like a wet rag. It should keep some of its um, form whenever you do this test, whenever you try to twist the shoe. The next criteria would be that it only bends slightly at the forefoot. It should, just like these images show, it should not bend excessively and uh, while you're walking or whenever you do the test on your shoes. And next, we want to make sure that our shoes have good arch support within them. So some shoes come with a decent arch support, but if not, you can always buy an over-the-counter arch support, um, even at Northern Illinois Home Medical Supply here in our town, or you can order it off of Amazon. Some of the over-the-counter arch supports that we recommend are Spanko, Power Step, or Superfeet. Uh, but the, um, the gold standard for arch supports is always custom orthotics. So if that is available to you, that would be what we would recommend first. We also want to make sure that the shoes are wide enough at the forefoot. Your toes should not be scrunched up at the forefoot and you should have adequate space. Some people uh, deal with bunions or a wide forefoot and we want to make sure that you have adequate space. Next, we tend to buy shoes that are too small and you always want to make sure that you have at least a thumb's width between the end of your toe and the end of the shoe. And so there's no toes being jammed um, while you're walking. All right, great. Thanks, Dr. Martinez. So here's another list describing some benefits of supportive shoes. Uh, a supportive shoe does distribute the pressure more evenly on the bottom of the foot and help prevent callus, skin breakdown, and wounds. Um, it should provide adequate arch support, but as Dr. Martinez mentioned, uh, additional arch support is available. A supportive shoe lessens and prevents pain, and in essence, this will help uh, protect you from injuries. Uh, you will have better stability and balance. And as she mentioned as well, decreases strain on other joints of the body. You know, we start at the feet, but also the ankles, the knees, the hip, and our, our back, and all the way up to our shoulders and head. So what about high heels? Are they good or are they bad? Well, high heels can put a lot of strain on the forefoot, and this can cause irritation to bunions, uh, hammer toes, or Taylor's bunions, which is on the other side of the foot. You can also develop uh, ingrown toenails, which can be very painful. They can also put a lot of strain on the heel region, so you can develop blisters, 
uh, plantar fasciitis, which is pain on the bottom of the heel, uh, pain on the back of the heel along the Achilles tendon, and prolonged use can actually cause the Achilles tendon to shorten. And a short Achilles tendon is the most deforming force of the entire foot and ankle, so that can really pose some issues. <clears throat> so five toed shoes. So what are these? Well, they are shoes that are individually made around each toe. Uh, they are gaining some popularity, um, but what we're finding is they do lack support and can cause a lot of stress injury on your feet. Uh, you know, some people are able to wear these and they do just fine, but for the majority of people, they are not very supportive. Um, what they do, and the goal is, is when you're jogging or running in these shoes, it reverses our normal gait pattern. So the normal gait pattern is a heel to toe, meaning our heel hits first, and then we extend through our toes. Well, these shoes cause us to do more of a toe landing, and so there's more pressure on our toes and forefoot. This has been shown to require more energy through exercise, and it tires out our feet more quickly, uh, resulting in increased risk of injury. <clears throat> so what shoes do podiatrists recommend? Well, there's a whole list here of different shoe brands, and to name a few, uh, New Balance, Asics, uh, Brooks, Pocas, uh, Dockers, uh, Dr. Comfort, Ultra, uh, Spanko, uh, they also make sandals as well, uh, Dansko, and then Ufos. They also make some nice um, sandals or slippers that are supportive. We also have diabetic shoes and inserts to offer to our diabetic patients uh, that qualify. And what a diabetic shoe is, is it's a shoe that is stiff sold for additional support. It does have a wider toe box to accommodate for bunions and hammer toe uh, deformities. They can come in laces or Velcro, uh, whichever would be easier uh, for the patient. And they also have a tri-layer insert or a three-layer insert. And what this does is it helps prevent those shearing forces, which means when we're standing on the ground and we get those shearing forces, those cause calluses, which over time can develop wounds and serious issues. Uh, so those inserts are very helpful. So in conclusion, uh, with all the information about supportive shoes, you can see the many benefits uh, that they have for us. It is very important to examine these shoes closely. Uh, everybody's feet are different, so one shoe for one person may not be the best for another. Uh, but it's important to find out what works specifically for you. And in regards to replacing shoes, uh, some tips to keep in mind is if it doesn't pass that three-point shoe test, it might be time to replace the shoe. If you do start to experience pain for no certain reason or injury, it could as well be the shoes. Or if you have uneven wear on the bottom of the sole, that can indicate a time to replace your shoes. Good. Well, that concludes our presentation tonight. So we, we hope that you learned some information on shoes. And uh, I'd like to thank KSB Community Wellness again. And we wish everyone a safe and happy holiday. Thank you. Thank you.